Today we're going to be talking about photosynthesis at three different levels. Whether you're in high school, taking an AP biology course, or in college, hopefully you'll be able to find something in this video to help you learn or review. Quick note, I do talk very fast in this video, so this is meant more as a review or as a tool if you're cramming for an exam. If you're seeing these concepts for the first time, this may come a little too fast for you. You can always slow the video down or you can go back and watch again. I just wanted to leave you with this warning before we get started. Let's get started with high school level biology and what photosynthesis is. You might have learned in middle school or at another time that photosynthesis is the process of using sunlight and carbon dioxide to make food in plants. Well, in high school, we're gonna get a little bit more specific and revise this just a little bit because we know not only plants do photosynthesis, but also algae and some bacteria. And it's not just food that they're making. Specifically in high school, we're gonna start talking about glucose, that organic compound, it's carbohydrate, C6H12O6. So our basic equation for photosynthesis is sunlight plus carbon dioxide plus water make or yield, that's what that arrow means, glucose and oxygen. So plants are taking in these things, sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and then they are making glucose and oxygen during the process of photosynthesis. So if we start big at this tree and then we zoom into a leaf where the green stuff is, that's where photosynthesis is going to happen, we look on the outer layer of the leaf and we see different types of cells. These are actually the epidermal cells on the leaf, and then you might be able to see these little green dots inside these cells on the micrograph and those are the chloroplasts. Chlorophyll is the pigment within chloroplasts that makes them green and it's the chlorophyll that's actually absorbing the sunlight in the process of photosynthesis. So let's talk a little bit more about these ingredients. Sunlight is sunlight. Carbon dioxide can also be abbreviated as CO2, C for carbon, O for oxygen, meaning there's two atoms of oxygen and one atom of carbon in each carbon dioxide molecule. Water, of course, is H2O, and glucose is C6H12O6. So this might be the first time you're seeing a chemical formula as complex as this. It just means there are six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens in this one molecule. Sometimes you'll see the symbolic form of glucose in this sort of hexagon shape, and that's okay too, but you might see glucose or this formula when you're talking about photosynthesis in class. And oxygen, of course, is O2. So this is our full equation for photosynthesis, not balanced. Sometimes you'll see the sixes in front of these molecules to make the balanced equation. But at the high school level, mostly you're just focused on what comes in and what goes out of the process. What's really important is that the glucose and oxygen that are produced in photosynthesis are going to go directly into the process of cellular respiration, which cells use to make energy. And remember, plants don't just do photosynthesis. They also do cellular respiration. Cellular respiration takes place in the mitochondria, Photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplasts, but plant cells have both. As you can see here in our very simple plant cell diagram, here's our chloroplasts and here are two mitochondria. One thing your teacher might ask you is to reverse this equation and see what it might look like, and it definitely looks very similar to the equation of cellular respiration because the inputs of one are the outputs of the other. They complement each other. Let's do a few questions at the high school review level before we move on to AP Biology. If you want to pause and try these for yourselves, I'm going to show the answers right after this slide. So this could be a good opportunity for you to practice. For number one, why and where do plants perform photosynthesis? They perform it in the chloroplast, that organelle, to assemble molecules like glucose for energy and oxygen, which gets used by the plant or released into the environment for us to use. Describe the equation for photosynthesis in words. Sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water yield glucose and oxygen. If you reverse the equation for photosynthesis, what does this remind you of? Cellular respiration. All right, we're moving on to AP level biology. If you're just in high school and you wanna know what's next, you can continue watching. If not, you can go back and watch some of the parts you just saw maybe one more time. All right, so our definition for photosynthesis at the AP level is a little bit more complex. One way that it's stated is coordinated reaction pathways that capture energy from the sun to yield ATP and NADPH, which power the production of organic molecules. Phew. Well, we know that those organic molecules are going to be things like glucose, and we have this really important part here about how this process captures energy from the sun, and in fact, all life on Earth gets energy from the sun because of photosynthesis. Remember, photosynthesis takes place in chloroplasts, and we think that the very first chloroplasts were actually prokaryotic organisms that performed photosynthetic-like pathways, and that they were engulfed by larger single cellular organisms who, after a very long time, formed a symbiotic relationship together and developed into the chloroplasts that we know today. This is of the theory of endosymbiosis and some of the evidence pieces that point to this are the double membrane that surrounds the chloroplast and the fact that the chloroplast itself has its own DNA. All right, let's get to the good stuff. There's two main parts of photosynthesis that we're going to study at the AP biology level. 
we have the light dependent or the light reactions of photosynthesis and we have the dark or carbon fixation reactions. Now remember all of this is taking place within the chloroplast and the space in the chloroplast is called the stroma but then there's also a third membrane this thylakoid membrane and these membranes are going to be able to provide us with concentration gradients for some really essential parts of the process to happen. Now the light dependent reactions are dependent on light and so sunlight is going to be absorbed by chlorophyll pigments at first and water, one of our main ingredients for photosynthesis, is going to enter here. Now we have complexes of proteins and pigments called photosystems and these photosystems, photosystem 2 and photosystem 1, are basically there to split the water and pass electrons down an electron transport chain, very similar to the electron transport chain that we see in cellular respiration. But in this electron transport chain, the final electron acceptor is NADP+, which will yield NADPH, a very important ingredient for the next part of photosynthesis. This process also is going to generate a proton gradient and we also have ATP synthase here just like we have in cellular respiration and so ATP synthase will generate ATP and that ATP will also help with the next part of photosynthesis. So again those light reactions take place within the thylakoid or across the membranes of the thylakoid. They involve protein complexes called photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. It is a little confusing that 2 comes first but it was discovered second so you know scientist what can you do water goes in here water is split here and oxygen comes out of that splitting of the water so all of the oxygen on earth actually comes from the light reactions of photosynthesis here in ap biology you do not need to memorize all the steps in this electron transport chain or the finer details of it these are the main components you will need to know about this part of the process your teacher may go into more detail about the different protein complexes or what's happening with the electrons here but it's really important to know that at the end of the light dependent reactions we have atp and NA ADPH to power the dark reactions or the carbon fixation reactions that happen outside the thylakoid in the stroma of the chloroplast. These reactions are part of a cycle called the Calvin cycle and in the Calvin cycle carbon dioxide enters and eventually with the help of ATP and NADPH sugars are produced. In AP biology you do not need to memorize the steps of the Calvin cycle but you do need to know what goes in and what comes out of it. Now these sugars are not going to be glucose immediately after the Calvin cycle. In fact it keeps, takes a couple more turns of the Calvin cycle and a few more steps to get to glucose but you can say sugars or organic compounds are generated here. These sugars do contain carbon which comes directly from carbon dioxide that enters the carbon cycle. A few questions, so if you want to pause and practice with these, you can. What is the role of photosynthesis in carbon cycling? It removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, fixing carbon into organic molecules. Where do the light reactions occur in photosynthesis? In the thylakoid. And where does the carbon come from? from carbon dioxide. All right, if you are ready and if that didn't go too fast for you, we're gonna move on to the college level review of photosynthesis. So if you're just curious about what comes next, you can go ahead and keep watching. But if this does not pertain to you, feel free to pause the video and go back and review what you need for the level that you are at. All right, I have a college level definition of photosynthesis here, how plants, algae, and some bacteria cap capture energy from sunlight to drive the synthesis of carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water and regenerate oxygen in the environment. Phew. Now, this is very similar to our definition in AP biology. I took out the ATP and NADPH parts, but it is still about the same level of detail that you will need to know. Let's take a little bit closer look at some leaf anatomy before we actually get into photosynthesis here. Now remember, not everything that does photosynthesis has leaves, but this is gonna be important when we start talking about the different types of photosynthesis later on. These cells here are called guard cells. They're gonna open and close making these pores called stomata where gas exchange can happen. So carbon dioxide can go in, oxygen can go out, water vapor can go out. Here we have our vascular bundle. So this is our vascular tissue where we can deliver food and nutrients throughout the plant. These blue cells are the spongy mesophyll. And we have a palisade mesophyll layer and then the upper epidermis here of the leaf, finally the waxy cuticle on top. Now zooming into one single chloroplast, remember this is happening within one chloroplast, there can be multiple within a single cell. We have light dependent reactions and dark reactions or light independent reactions, also called carbon fixation reactions. In the light reactions, we have water going in and oxygen coming out, which is really important. This is where all of the oxygen on earth is generated. In the dark or carbon fixation reactions, this is where we're actually fixing or attaching the carbon so that we can generate certain molecules that can be then turned into organic compounds like sugars that the plant can use. Remember the light dependent reactions happen within the thylakoid 
helicoid stacks and across those membranes, and the dark carbon fixation reactions happen in the stroma or that inner space of the chloroplast. In photosynthesis, we have light coming in being captured by pigments called chlorophyll. This energy is going to be captured in these photosystems, which are embedded in the membranes of the thylakoid, and there's other protein complexes there as well. Water is actually split, and so the transfer of electrons from that water down an electron transport chain is going to allow us to form NADPH, the final electron acceptor. And a proton gradient across the membrane is going to help generate ATP, and those two ingredients, ATP and NADPH, are going to go into the Calvin cycle or carbon fixation reactions of photosynthesis. All right, so let's take a closer look at those light reactions or our light-dependent reactions. So in this process, we're taking light energy and we're converting it into chemical energy. So we have this group of pigments and proteins called a photosystem. We have photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Photosystem 2 comes first, and it's going to absorb one photon of light into a molecule of chlorophyll. This is going to excite the chlorophyll and an electron can break free, but that electron needs to be replaced in the photosystem. So water is split, which is going to release an electron and form oxygen and then hydrogen ions as well. And this is all happening within the thylakoid space and we're going to have a separation between the stroma and the inner thylakoid space, which is going to later help us establish a proton gradient. So we get our oxygen molecule out of that, our water is split, and then our electron is going to travel through a series of different proteins in an electron transport chain. That energy helps us pump hydrogen ions into the th inner thylakoid space. And then photosystem one is going to accept the electron, but this is also getting more light. So this electron is energized again, which can then allow the formation of NADPH with the help of a hydrogen ion and the energy from that electron. Now we also have a buildup of hydrogen ions in the thylakoid space, which is going to create a proton gradient, meaning there's more here than there are on this side. So we're going to have these hydrogen ions going down the gradient through this enzyme ATP synthase, moving from high to low, which allows the generation of ATP from ADP. Now these two important molecules, NADPH and ATP, are going to be what powers the formation of organic molecules in the Calvin cycle, which is our next step, and it's going to occur outside of the thylakoid. Big picture, we have carbon dioxide going in, carbohydrates or organic molecules coming out, and ATP and NADPH are used from the light reactions in this part of the entire photosynthetic process. They're called carbon fixation reactions because we are taking carbon from carbon dioxide and fixing it to other molecules or sticking it on other molecules and generating these organic compounds. Now a couple of more molecules to introduce you to. There's a molecule called RubyP, which has five carbons. I know, I know, most people say RUBP. I learned it as RubyP, and so that's what gets stuck in my head. So that's what I said in this video, but if your teacher says RUBP, they're probably right. And with the help of Rubisco, an enzyme, we're going to do the actual carbon fixation. So carbon is going to be fixed onto these RubyPs, but because it's kind of unstable, it's going to split in half, and we're going to get several three carbon molecules out of that process. Now, as you're going through the Calvin cycle and learning the steps, it's probably going to be important for you and for your professor to keep track of the number of carbons in each molecule and the number of molecules in each step. In this video, I'm just doing the quick overview of what happens, so be sure to go back and check with your textbook or any other resources you have to keep track of all the carbons throughout the cycle. So after that carbon fixation step occurs, then we have the reduction, which is where we're going to need our ATP and our NADPH. So we get our molecules reduced, meaning they're gaining electrons, and ADP provides the energy for that. And we get those electrons from NADPH. That's going to generate G3P, several of them in fact, but only one goes out into the cell to later make the organic compounds and sugars that, that the plant cell needs. The others go back into the Calvin cycle because it's going to continue in a cycle and still need to generate more RubyP. We need more ATP to generate more RubyP from all those G3P molecules, so we add in more ATP here, and then the cycle can start again with the addition of more carbon. Rubisco is thought to be the most populous enzyme on the entire planet because there's so many cells and so many chloroplasts that are participating in photosynthesis all the time. But there is more than just one type of photosynthesis. This type, the traditional type of photosynthesis, or the one you most commonly see in textbooks, is actually called C3 because of that three carbon compound that's generated here in our first step after carbon fixation. But we're also going to talk about C4 and CAM photosynthesis, which are other ways plants have adapted in different environments to combat some inefficiencies in the process. So in dry and arid environments, certain plants have adapted to be able to do C4 
photosynthesis, which captures sunlight and fixes carbon dioxide into a four carbon compound in a different space. So literally different types of cells will do this instead of within the same cells. And in can photosynthesis, instead of a physical separation, we're going to have a timing separation. So it's going to capture sunlight during the day, but fix carbon at night. So it won't open those stomata for the gas exchange for carbon to come in until the nighttime when water loss is going to be limited because there's less evaporation at nighttime. Now that is a lot of information, so let's do a few quick review questions before we wrap up for today. The final electron acceptor in photosynthesis is NADP plus to form NADPH. What molecule is necessary for the light independent reactions? Carbon dioxide. And how do can plants limit water loss during photosynthesis? They only open stomata during the night when water is less likely to be lost due to evaporation. I hope this review of high school, AP, and college level photosynthesis has been helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below if you like this content. Give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.